Yum, yum! Hi, this is Yosem Malkosh from Pixel Fondue, and today we're going to look at the continuation of the uh, hexagon grid or pattern or array. Um, in terms of what we can do with it, you'll notice here I've got a nice, sleek, cropped version of my hexagon grid. We're going to talk about a few different things. Um, we're reverting to changing you know, what's controlling the number of hexagons and, and the controls that we built for it from previous videos. Uh, in this case, I'm able to extend, um, in, in this case, that purple boundary box in both um, X and Y. And what it looks like it's doing is actually just making something bigger and smaller. There's a lot more complicated things going on behind the scenes. If I turn off the Boolean operation, you'll notice here, for example, um, I can actually continually, continually add more and uh, on the x direction and the y direction. Now in this case, the previous video, we used the channel handles to control the number of uh, arrays. But in this case, I'm actually changing the size of the cube in both an x uh, and y direction. And that in itself is actually controlling the number of arrays on both the x and the y direction. Um, and then obviously the Boolean operation at the end to kind of truncate that to that shape. Now this will all make sense when we reach to the next videos and why we're doing this. Uh, but bear with me as we go through the steps of creating this sample. So let's get started. So the first step is uh, let's get rid of the uh, channel handle uh, options that were uh, assigned to X and Y in the previous videos. Uh, we're going to right click on this assign handle. Let's remove X and then we're going to also remove Y. Selecting the channel handle and then make sure it's mode remove. So now that should uh, have removed them from both. What we're going to do now is uh, take up an empty mesh layer, such as this one right here. You can add one just simply by adding one here. So an empty mesh layer, we're going to add the operation of cube. So it's a procedural cube. Um, you can see it here. I don't want to make it that thick just for now. So I'm going to put this to, let's do point, uh, actually let's just do it point 0.1, how about that? Um, so, we're going to add, first of all, all the position, well, x, y positions, and then the x, y sides. And this will do a few things for us. Um, we're also then going to create a locator. And this locator is going to have a different shape. We're going to have this to be a plane. And I'm going to collapse this. And we're going to set this to non-solid. Um, we're going to also grab the offsets as well as the size and stick it in there. So we have the offsets and the sizes for both of these items. And we're going to set the display, draw options, set the wireframe, and let's just give it some color that we're able to tell it's different. Um, how about something bright? Uh, actually, let's drop this. Okay, so that's now visible. Now, um, the first issue is uh, I need this to move uh, in this direction up. So basically I want the cube to, to hover and start at the um, zero uh, origin area. For that to happen, I need to uh, offset it. So obviously I can offset that um, manually or I can do that via rig. Uh, let's start off with the manual. So if I set this to 0.5, and we'd go to the locator and just do the same kind of thing for the offset, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that should put us in the same spot. Um, now I want to be able to control the sizing of this, and uh, this is where we're going to probably get the channel handle to control the sizing. The only issue is that when I control the sizing here, so if I change the size, you'll notice that it stays in the middle. What I actually want it is to kind of use the origin point as the size, uh, as the uh, as the reference point. And that means if I scale this way, um, half of that distance needs to go in the new offset. Um, for me to do that, um, it's pretty easy. I can probably just work that out with some simple math. Um, let's just put a divide node in here. And we'll just set this to two. And we're going to say, all right, well, for size x, 
I want you to position this in X offset. So obviously it didn't change because uh, I've already put the same number in there. So now if I grab this channel handle and go up, you'll notice that the scale goes up and it stays right there. Um, we're going to do the same thing here. So first of all, I'm going to set my X size X to size X here and offset X to offset X here. Now, again, if I set, go back to size X here and just change it, you'll notice both have changed. And now what I need is a divide node two. It's going to be the same thing, except for this time it's going to be the Y size. And we're going to set this to offset Y, offset Y, and then size Y is going to go to size Y here. And oops, that one's not hooked up yet. So we can just try it right there. and Y is working. Uh, next step is just to assign the channel handles to those. So if I can just come to here and assign handle. Ooh, I'm a little bit trigger happy today. Assign X size and then for the Y, Y assign. So now, ooh, there we go. So now I have the cube uh, functioning. I don't want the cube to be visible for now. And what we're gonna do is just say visible no, and do not put hi children. I do want the, um, I'm gonna put a locator just inside of there just so I don't have to worry about it. Um, and now it's going to always be visible, but embedded inside of the cube. Um, now, what we're going to try to do in the next step is to figure out what is the math behind, let me grab these guys and just kind of move them out of the way. Um, better yet, I found that if I separate the channels, this gives me a clearer, linear way to work that I just think makes things a lot easier for you to understand. There we go. So in this case, uh, those have been split. Um, I also would like to do any, any channels or anything that have the channel handles attached to them. So if I go to this guy, uh, I'm gonna color him red, just to kind of match the channel handle option. So we have that here. I've already colored uh, this and this as well that were from the previous um, video. Uh, the next step is to figure out how do I populate this? So right now, um, my X, you know, I, these don't long, no longer uh, change the array count. I actually have to manually put in the array count. Um, so if I go here, I just have to go like this. Uh, what I'd like to do is to figure out what is the math behind extending the cube and having the cube actually control uh, what is the number of hexagons that are in the X and Y directions. Now to make sure that the array works, we're actually gonna drop this down to a lower number just to make sure that when I plug stuff in, it's gonna actually pop into the correct fields. And we're gonna do some simple math equations here to figure this out. So um, the first one, which is basically, I'm gonna use the uh, X direction. And for the X direction to work, think of it this way. Uh, I have a scale here, which is, uh, let's say it's one meter. In this case, the cube is one meter across. This is zero, this is one. Um, what I'm gonna do is divide one by the distance of, uh, basically what is the distance of each unit? And our unit is, as you know, I'll drop this to one, is one of these. And uh, we'd consider one unit as from this point to this point. And if you think about it, it's basically the radius, which is one, which is established that from last time that this from here to here is one, and this is also one. And then from here to the middle, that's another one, and then one more, another one. And we already know what that is, what's well, just basically the radius that we have. So we're gonna add a multiply math, and we're gonna set the B value to three. We're gonna grab the radius, and we're gonna set that radius to three over here. So um, 
this should go into the count. And we're going to set that to x count. Oop. That's not what I want to do. We still are missing the divide. And the divide is basically the size. So x divided by 3, or uh, 3 times the radius, 0.3 in this case. And we'll get a value out of that, and we should dump it into x. Um, now, that looks good, except for I can either shift this by the amount of radius, and that'll give me about here. I'll still be missing some for the lower part, and the higher part would be great. Um, I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that, obviously, this part is done. So I'm going to add another math node, and this one's going to be add. And what we're going to do is just manually add two parts. Uh, I can add one and show you what I mean about uh, what happens. So in this case, we're just going to add this over here and grab this guy and stick him here. So you can see here, that looks great. That works. Why wouldn't I keep it this way? Well, if I start doing this and increasing it, you'll notice there's a portion where it's scaling, where it doesn't understand. Obviously, it's rounding up uh, the value, so it doesn't. Um, it's not going to add you know, half an array. Um, but I don't want it to do that. I don't want to have a gap in there. I want it to exactly always be bigger or the scale of this actual square. And uh, to do that, we just change this from one to two. And that's it. And now, no matter what I do, it'll never catch up with what I'm, uh, with what I'm stretching on the x direction. Uh, y direction, kind of similar in, in principle. Um, we're gonna add the multiply. In this case, um, what we're actually going up to is this value, which we've established was the sine of uh, 60, which I believe we have here, right there. So that's half the height. And we want it to go full height. So let's just do uh, half height times uh, 2. And in this case, I'm going to do that. Multiply that times 2. And then we're going to add another divide. So we're going to divide this time the uh, size y into the value here and set this to y. And again, um, basically it's going to look something like this, which if I do this, it's following correctly, but I also need to have some additional ones added. And again, it just has to do with the rounding. Um, I'm going to add this over here. Here we go. We're going to set this right here. This will be right there. And we're going to add, so if I add one, again, it works, but not really. Add two, that way I'm covered. Uh, let's just test it to make sure. So no matter how high I go, it's always covering uh, that value. Same thing with x. Um, once I've done this, you can notice that if I change the scaling, it's kind of taking care of that stuff uh, for me as well. And be careful not to go to zero, because then Moto flips out, I think it just did right now. So I'm going to probably crash this and restart it. Um, Maybe we can change it from a channel handle to a, a channel hall with uh, set limits. That way I never hit the zero mark. Um, and that's about it. The last step uh, of this part is to actually create the outline as a kind of calling point, a truncated uh, square intersect. So that way I can just see what's inside of the square. That's a pretty easy one. Um, I basically when I created the cube, which is this guy, uh, I envisioned that this thing would actually just Boolean the operation uh, completely. So what I would do is just go to hexagon. Let's switch that over. Sorry, I had to reset my viewport. And we just say Boolean. Now the driver for, uh, surface is going to be mesh, which is the cube we created. And the intersection is the operation. Press OK. We're going to, again, go back to Mesh and go to Display and just make that visible No. And now what we have is a consolidated um, hexagon grid that 
functions within uh, the border of the cube that we created. We let's just name that cube. Boolean. And we're going to actually name the locator guide. All right. Um, again, that looks pretty cool. I'm going to save, but increasing this. So obviously the reason I did the whole control, I could have just done a you know, 100 or something, but performance wise, you don't want to have too much crazy stuff happening. So I know that it's going to be only the extent of my uh, scale here, as opposed to an infinite array that needs to be uh, booleaned out. Um, scaling, I'm going to be more careful this time, but you can see here I can add or subtract the scaling. Um, I can also do the same thing with the um, borders. Now, obviously, the border uh, in this case, we didn't do the math, uh, so if I hide, you'll kind of notice this. Um, I can probably do some additional math to make sure that these also get minimized, but I'm not going to do that. It's just we're not going to need it at this point. All right, and that's it for this video. Uh, in the next steps, we'll talk about what does this all uh, mean? What am I doing all this for? Um, and a couple of extra steps that we can do to create some funky effects, either in flat mode or some other modes that may be useful for your design projects. All right, that's it. Thank you, and have a good one. Yum, yum!